Our next guest is an entrepreneur, a best-selling author, and she also happens to be changing the world with underwear. Yes, underwear. Okay. <laughs> well, here to talk about her revolutionary company, thanks. Please welcome Mickey Agrawal. Hi. Hello. Okay, How's it going? We were talking in the back. I just love <laughs> this story. I'm so excited about this segment, so let's do it. Yeah. Your line of underwear is called Thanks, but yeah. how does it differ from other panties that are on the market? Yeah, so as busy women, as you know, mm -hmm. you know, we, we're running around all day long, and sometimes we, you know, as when we as women, we have our periods. Mm -hmm. And when we have our periods, we sometimes forget to do what? Change our tampons, pads, and women have overflow in their underwear. And there's just it's just a very natural, normal thing. It shouldn't be embarrassing, but sometimes it is. Mm -hmm. And so sort of, you know, the question number one became, like, in this day and age of innovation, when, you know, the president has more information on his, uh, a nine-year-old girl has more information on her cell phone than the president did, 15 mm -hmm. years ago, yeah. how is there no innovation in undergarments for women, it's right? It's true. And so, you know, so, so, so solution one was to innovate and invent a technology in the undergarments that make the underwear beautiful, looks like a regular pair of underwear, mm -hmm. but it's also antimicrobial, moisture wicking, absorbs up to six teaspoons of liquid, depending on the style. Wow. Um, and it's, you'll never leak through ever, and mm. it's also stain free. And so you just don't have to worry about sort of any of that, um, so, so this, the, you know, the, the sort of anxieties around it. So these are like the bounty of underwear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love right, that. exactly, yeah. Okay. And, this is, and this is it, and it's, it's sort of like, again, like, wow. they're, they're, it's the smartest underwear in your drawer, you know, and you're going to want to have sort of, sort of the smart underwear, it's thoughtful. I um, like what um, you said, they're fancy, they're not like, oh, grandma, the yeah, pins, exactly. they're very nice. And, exactly, and, so and you can't the, tell, but there's right. four layers of technology in there, but you cannot tell. And it's under this portion here, yeah. which is extra padding exactly. to absorb. Exactly, and, and then part number two yeah. is, you know, I've, my father's from India, my mom's mm -hmm. from Japan, and on my trip to, you know, I've been to Africa twice, and on my trip to, to Africa, I met this young girl, and she was like no older than 12 years old, and her name was Amale. Mm -hmm. And I was like, why aren't you in school? It's a weekday. And she said, it's my week of shame. My week, so my her, week of shame. She called her period. period her week of shame. My and I goodness. then kind of researched and discovered that she, along with over 100 million girls in the developing world, are missing a week of school and eventually dropping out of school and using unimaginable things like sticks and leaves and mud and rags and bark and things like that that you can't even, you know, you just you don't, you don't kind of think about what girls are using in the developing world. But, you know, again, it's a taboo subject, and so nobody's talking about it, and therefore no one's innovating. Well, why do you think it is still so taboo in this day and age, not just in Africa, even here? It's like, oh, it's a subject we don't talk about, we don't mention. And, yeah. and, and that's it. And I think it's, it's sort of an idea whose time has come. It's a topic whose time has come. And people are mm -hmm. starting to, you know, there's menstruation management day now. Mm -hmm. um, and people are starting to really, like, say, hey, you know, the feminine hygiene space, there's been little innovation because, mm -hmm. again, men don't have it. Women are embarrassed about it. Again, it's time to innovate around something that's been so normal. Men are here because of that very normal time of the month. Without that's that time, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be sitting here. And so, mm -hmm. so to solve that, for every pair of underwear that we sell here, right. we fund seven washable, reusable cloth pads um, through a partnership with AfroPads. And um, so, so for every pair of underwear we sell, we fund seven reusable cloth pads. My goodness. And so they can go back to school and work without worrying. Wow. Yeah. Really? Now, what's yeah. the reaction been to these super absorbent underwear? <laughs> <laughs> so far, I mean, women are like, thank goodness. Yeah. You know, <laughs> hallelujah. And, uh -huh. you know, my, you know there's, we've received tons and tons of letters and emails and, and messages from people saying, I ran around the ER with no worries, like a women doctor. Mm. You know, or I, I walked my child, you know, in, through the park. I didn't have to worry about that. Mm. I, you know, women also have incontinence. One in three women above the age of 35 mm. suffer from incontinence. Very normal when they sneeze, they pee a little bit. Like, it's just, mm -hmm. you know, it happens mm -hmm. after you kind of give birth and things like that. And so this solves a problem for all kinds of different women, but just the, by and large, the feedback has been like, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, yeah. if you're having a light day, can mm -hmm. you wear this underwear instead of, say, a panty Absolutely. liner? Or... You know, this, the underwear replaces panty liners the whole time. Really? Um, you wear a tampon in your first couple of days, in your last few days, you wear nothing, nothing at all. Really? And so this, this replaces a panty liner, which are so uncomfortable for women, mm -hmm. and replaces all pads. It doesn't replace a tampon on your heavy flow day, but it does replace on um, your light all your light days, everything. But you do you do find a lot of women are actually wearing these or in place of regular underwear? They're just wearing these Absolutely. every day? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. They're comfortable. They're protective. They're, they're beautiful. They they're just beautiful. feel... I mean, yeah. they the material like Victoria's feels. Secret. Yeah, My exactly. Yeah, exactly. You would never know that yeah. these were like Superman underwear. Exactly. <laughs> Superman <laughs> underwear. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's right. Exactly. What is this material? Is this like satin? Um, not so, good material, okay, but it feels soft. The so, yeah. <laughs> you can't touch what is this material. Yeah, I mean, I'm curious, curious, it feels they're, comfortable. Yeah, <laughs> there, there are a few from, there are different, um, we use a few different uh, fabrics around it. The, the in, innermost layer is entirely made of cotton. Okay. And then yeah. there's sort of, we use different fabrics. We have satin and laces and things like that on the outside. Okay. Now, you went to Kickstarter to fund this. Why yes. Kickstarter? And what was the initial reaction to the idea that you wanted to sell? So, so what's interesting about Kickstarter is that mm -hmm. you don't have to give away your company for, to, to sort of raise money, right? Right. You're selling your pre 
pre-selling your product. True. And so we pre-sold you know, between Kickstarter and Indiegogo and on our website during in 45 days over $120,000 worth of underwear. You are kidding. No. And so we were able to take that money and make 12,000 pairs of underwear. Um, and so rather than having to raise money at the time, which now we did, but before that, um, we just were able to kind of do it on our own and just sort of pre-sell the underwear. Now, how um, did this idea come to you? Because all the time we hear, you know, Sarah Blakely, the woman who's yeah. behind Spanx, we hear mm -hmm. her story. Yeah. It came out of necessity. Yeah. You know, necessity is mother the mother of invention. invention. Exactly. Right. <laughs> so was this something that you'd experienced in your personal life? And you're like, listen, I've destroyed one too many pairs of La Perla's exactly. and I'm done. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Exactly right. It's like, how is it possible there's no innovation in undergarments this mm -hmm. day and age? 2014 mm -hmm. and how are women dropping out of school in this day and age right. because something as natural as their periods yeah. it's crazy mm -hmm. and so sort of there's you know across the, the world we have like uni you know a unifying thing that women go through and girls go through but so this, we can kind of yeah oh I was gonna say but this isn't your only business venture you're known as a serial social entrepreneur e yeah okay yeah. Now I've heard of a serial entrepreneur but how is that different from a serial social, social entrepreneur? entrepreneur so so all my businesses are sort of have have sort of are mission driven and have so, sort mm. of social and uh, you know relevance to it okay so so, you know, one of our, my, my first company was a restaurant, which I still own three, three restaurants. They're called Wild. Um, and they're farm to table and gluten free wow. and support local farms and Wait, create you're lots. behind Wild? Yeah. Wow. Cool. You've been? I've been. No it's way. So <laughs> Yay. She's <laughs> like, wait a minute. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. One in the West Village, one in Williamsburg, and then mm -hmm. one in, uh, in, in downtown Vegas. Um, and then, and then our, our, my, our other company was, you know, founded by my twin sister that I'm a partner in. It's called Super Sprouts, mm -hmm. and it's like Sesame Street, but focusing on nutrition, wellness, education. So again, like you think about, you know, kids at, at our restaurants, at our pizza places. No one ever, no kids ever ate sort of anything but cheap, plain cheese pizza, no green stuff on their mm -hmm. on their pizzas. No, and yeah. so, like, how do you, you know, how do you get kids to eat vegetables on their pizzas? And so, my sister created sort of a a, a, a little coloring sort of menu book that had like Brian Broccoli, who is super strong because broccoli. <sighs> For your bones, Great. and Erica Eggplant is super smart because Erica because er, Eggplant's good for your for your brain, mm -hmm. um, and like Susie Sweepy super speedy because peas give you energy, and um, oh, and like Colby, and, so Colby, and Colby Carrot is super psyched because carrots give you um, give you you know are better are good for your sight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and so again, so now kids were learning very quickly about the nutritional benefit of the vegetable through the superheroes of the characters, and so immediately kids were like like I want to be strong like Brian Broccoli, and so they run <laughs> to the counter and order broccoli on their pizzas, mm -hmm. and it was like direct yeah. translation. It was incredible, and so my sister. Um, built this company, which again I'm a part of, but um, right. um, and it's it's called Super Sprouts, and uh, and you know we now reach a million families a week. Um, we just Michelle Obama just performed in our Super Sprouts show. No, um, we just came back from a 26 city tour in 26 days across the country to kind of you know talk about to, you know to get people to, to know about our, our our we have a live live puppet shows as well. Okay, but you can't so. just breeze over that. How did you hook up with Michelle Obama and yeah. get her to be part of your? I love that yeah. she's just <laughs> casual about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know. Well, no, we have like we're hanging. Yeah. <laughs> no, we have like Shaquille O'Neal as a spokesperson. We have Russell Simmons. We have um, we have uh, Cece Sabathia. We've got tons and tons of sort of spokespeople who've done PSAs with us. If you go to SuperSprouts.com, you can mm -hmm. check out all the all the videos for free. Um, they're all free videos. Um, so so Michelle Obama, we we met Sam Cass, um, who's a chef of the White House. Oh yeah. Um, yes, they're yes, they're yes. the big sort of you know um, they push the Let's Move initiative, mm -hmm. which is sort of the big initiative that yeah. that the the, the first lady. It's her initiative. Mm -hmm. And so you know the whole idea is to move, but also to eat well. Yeah. Right. And so Super Sprouts is really you know, again, if you you know doing a quick sort of you know his, historical timeline, 1970s was about literacy. So Sesame Street was a big multi-billion-dollar you know you know show. Mm -hmm. uh, 1990s was about environmentalism, and so it was so Captain Planet was the main thing. That's and then so 2000s true. was about um, language learning, and um, mm -hmm. uh, and and so Dora the Explorer was right. was the main. Now it's a 15 billion-dollar franchise, mm -hmm. right? And so now it's really about nutrition education, and Super Sprouts is really the only only sort of thing that exists. And so there's a real opportunity to kind of you know. To, to kind of through culture and through media, through stories, through games, through um, music, uh, teach kids about nutrition, but through fun sort of storytelling. You know, the thing that I find shocking is that you're just so lazy. I mean, you just, <laughs> like, you just why don't you do something just, with your why life, Mickey? You I tell with you. Your life, Mickey. Well, no, I'm kidding. Okay, so, so in addition to all yeah. of that, you're a soccer player as well. Yes. And you're a boxer. Um, I mean, well, I mean, okay, uh, you like, hold a you hold a world record. Oh, right, in in, in, uh, in okay. most number of Wookie punches. Uh, okay, let's on, on let's Jimmy watch that because okay. you were on Jimmy Fallon show too. Yeah. It's all yeah. Fallon all the time here. So <laughs> yeah. let's watch you okay. in action awesome. and then we'll discuss. Perfect. Okay, and we can talk about me. Yeah. Mickey, Mickey, you're going to be attempting a brand new world record tonight. That record is most times to punch a Wookie in the stomach in 15 seconds. <laughs> Mickey, are you ready? I'm ready. Wookie, are you ready? <laughs> All right, very good. Assume your positions. 
Officials get ready to count the punches. We'll need 15 seconds on the clock. Roots, can we have a little Wookiee punching music? Is that, is that something? Three, two, one, punch! <laughs> Good, yeah, this is good. Is it going to be? <laughs> Two, one, there you go. Oh. All right, that is it. Okay, oh that was pretty impressive, <laughs> I wow. will have to say. 77 punches in 15 seconds, hold the world record, that's right. 77 punches. Wookie punches. Wookie yeah. punches. <laughs> you have to say that first. Wookie yeah, punches. Yeah, Wookie punches. punches. Yeah. I like it. Check I, want you, I want you in a bar fight with me, girl. Yeah. Yeah. I want you in a bar fight with me. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Deal. So now you can check that off your bucket list and being an author. Tell us about your new book. Yeah, so, you know, I guess over the years, you know, people just kept asking me, like, how did you raise money without mm. having a business plan, without having an idea how to raise money? You know, how do you get press without knowing anybody in the, in the, in the media space? How did you, you know, how did you build a community? You know, you know, a tribe of really inspiring friends, and how did you eliminate all these negative relationships in your life? And mm -hmm. how did you know how do you stay fit when you're really, really busy? And just so all these questions that sort of like just to go from step so zero to do it? step one. <laughs> well, I mean, so so the book really you know talks about you know all of those things, just the experiences and the stories. Um, to and give, it's called Do, do cool, cool Shit. Beep. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 And then, wait, read the subtitle too. Yeah. I like Quit that. your day job, start your own business, and live happily ever after. Happily ever after. I like yeah. That. yeah. And, and again, the idea is, you know, like if you think about you know, people like Richard Branson and Tony Shea, mm -hmm. billionaires yes. who've built businesses and who've, who've written incredible books. It's almost like too high, too far, uh, not really attainable sometimes. Mm -hmm. so you're like, wow, those are so amazing. Love reading their stories, but I can't get to them. It doesn't me, feel real. It doesn't feel like I can. So for me, it's like they're like, okay, I can get to her. Like, you know, zero <laughs> to one. Like, I can get to her. And so, you know, the book really gives you sort of the, the, the you know, the, the, the granular steps to go from step zero to step one in business and life. So, what's yeah. the most important thing? I know it's a lot in the book. What's the most important thing we need to know if we wanted to make those steps? Um, step one is to eliminate negative relationships and so you kind of really you know deplete equals delete is one of my sort of things Ooh. when you know where tweet that. Yeah, deplete equals deplete. Equals de <laughs> yeah deplete equals delete and you know the idea is that you know you can't really you can't really start and, and feel like the, the motivation and the, and the courage to do stuff if you don't have people supporting you or inspiring mm -hmm. you and so you know the two things to look for is like uh, you know is to really check your, your your friends you know you're as mm -hmm. you're as good and the average of the five closest friends you keep Right, that concept. You know, it's a, it's an it's an important thought, and you start to evaluate who you spend your time with. And if you're like, am I just going to the bars on the weekend to get drunk? Am I just like hanging out talking to other people behind their backs? Like, what am I doing while I'm with them? And how do you feel when you leave them? Are you feel inspired, engaged, ready to go and tackle something and try something else, and to have the energy to go and continue, or do you feel like depleted? Um, and it could be from a parent, it could be from a friend, it could be from someone you've known for 14, 15 years. Mm. You just, you know. Sometimes you kind of get comfortable with, with the people you hang it's out true. with, oh. and you have to start to reevaluate that. And once you do, so much changes. So much of your life change, transforms when you spend time with the right people. Okay, so oh, your next job is going to be life coach, uh, yeah. <laughs> therapist. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay, well, well I, I have so a much. feeling that we'll be seeing you a lot. Yes. So thank you so much, yeah. and really keep up the good work, thank girl. You so Very much. proud of you. I appreciate that. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And thank you're you. watching Arise Entertainment 360.